Sorry, wrong number. By Lucille Fletcher. A radio play. Oh dear! You call, please. Operator, I've been dialing Moray Hill for 0098 now for the last three quarters of an hour. And the line is always busy. But I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? Moray Hill, 400098. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all the time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill 400098. Hello. 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 Hello, George. Yes, sir. Hello. Who's this? What number am I calling, please? We have heard from our client. He said the cost is clear for tonight. Yes, sir. Where are you now? In a phone boat. Okay. You know the address. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar on a 2nd Avenue for a beer. Be sure that all the lights downstairs are out. They're short. <laughs> Be only a one light visible from the street. At 11.15, a subway train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case her window is open and she should scream. Oh, hello. What number is this, please? Okay, I understand. Make it quick. As a little blood as possible, our client does not wish to make her suffer long. A knife. Okay, sir. Yes, a knife. Will be okay. And remember, remove the rings and bracelets. In the jewelry in the barrio drawer, our client wish it to look like simple robbery. I get it. Oh, how awful, how unspeakable. <laughs> Your puta. Your call, please. Operator, I've been cut off. I'm sorry, madam. What number were you calling? Why it was supposed to be Murray Hill for 0098, but it wasn't. Some wires must be crossed. I was cut into so wrong number, and I've been just hit the most dreadful thing. A, a mortar! And operator, you simply have a retrains that call at once. I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quit. Oh, I know it was a wrong number and I had no business listening. But these two men were, were cold-blooded parents. Some poor innocent woman who was all alone in the house near a bridge and we got to stop them. We got to... What number were you calling, madam? That doesn't matter. This was a wrong number and I dialed it. And we got to find out what it was immediately. But, madam. Oh, why are you so stupid? Look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you try Murray Hill for 0098 for me. You dialed it. But your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number, and I could hear them. But they couldn't hear me. Now I simplify fail to see why I could be make that same mistake again. Oh purpose why I couldn't charge Dallin Murray Hill for 0098 in the same careless sort of way. Murray Hill for 0098. We'll try to get it for you, madam. Thank you. I am sorry, Murray Hill for 0098 is busy. Operator, operator! Yes, madam. You didn't try to get the wrong number at all. I asked in split city and all you did was dial correctly. I am sorry. What your number were you calling? Can't you for once forget what number I was calling and do something specific? Now I want to trace that call and divide duty in your severe duty to trace that call and to apprehend those dangerous killer. And if you won't, we'll connect you with the chef operator. Please. A chief operator. Chief operator, I want you to trace a call and telephone call immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down because it was about a murder. Yes, a terrible cold blooded murder of a poor innocent woman tonight at 11:15. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? A live call, we can trace it on the equipment. 
If it been disconnected, we can Disconnected? If the party stop talking to each other Oh, but, but of course They must have stopped talking to each other by now That was at least 5 minutes ago And they didn't sound like this type who would make a long call I can try tracing it now What is your name, madam? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Elbert Stevenson, but listen. Your telephone number? Plaza 42295, but if you go on wasting all this time. What is your reason for wanting this call trace? My reason? Well, for a heaven's sake, isn't it obvious? I overheard two men, they're killers. They're flying to murder this woman and smatter for the police. Have you told the police? No, how could I? You're making this check into a private call, purely as a private individual. Yes, but meanwhile... Mrs. Mrs. Well, Mrs. Stevenson seriously doubt whether we could make this check for you. At this time, just on your say-so. <laughs> Mrs. Stevenson seriously doubt whether we could make this check for you. At this time, just on your say-so as a private individual, we'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake, you meant to tell me I can't report a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape. Why is perfectly idiotic? All right, then I will call the police. Ridiculous. Your call, please. The police department, please. Ringing the police department. Police department. Present 43, Dapi speaking. Police department? Oh, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Elbert Simon Stevenson of 53 North Sultan Place. I'm calling to report a murder. I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it. Over the telephone, over wrong number that operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid. And I guess it's the end. You're the only people who could do anything. Um, yes, ma'am. It was perfectly definite murder. I heard them plans distinctly. Two men were talking and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around in the beer of 2nd Avenue. And there was a some third man, a client, who was, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelet and use a knife. Well, it's unnerved me dreadfully and I'm not well. You see, when, at long, you see, when was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, they, you can do something. You, you do understand. And what is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Sultan Place, that's near a bridge, that Queen's Borough Bridge, you know? If we have a private patrolman on our street and 2nd Avenue. Tell us what that number you were calling. I ship. Murray Hill 4098, but that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 4098 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. I'm an invalid, you know. It is the maid's night all, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have telephone right beside my bed. We'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check it with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call if the parties have stopped talking. I'm taking care of that. Yes. Yes. Go. That's all. What good does checking the call do it if they stop talking by the time you track it down? They'll already have committed the murder. We'll take care of it. Lady, don't worry. I'd say the whole thing called for a search and a complete and throughout search for the whole city. I'm very near a bridge and I'm not far from the second avenue. And I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder 
going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am. Oh, I don't know. This coincidence and so horrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman. The Second Avenue is a long street, ma'am. And do you happen to know how many bridges there in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens and the Bronx. And how do you know there isn't some little house out on Staten Island? On some little second avenue you've never heard about. How do you know they were even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. How do you know it wasn't a long distance call you overheard? Telephones are funny things. Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in one that telephone call. Supposing you've got your husband the way you always do. Would this murder have made any difference to you then? I suppose not, but it's so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are committed in the city every day. Mom, if we could do something to stop them, we would but a clue of this kind that so you isn't much more used to us than no clue at all. But surely... Of course you have some reason for thinking this call is phony and that someone may be planning to murder you. Three, go. Me? Oh no, I hardly think so. I mean, why would anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Louise. She's a big 200 pounder. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me, adores me, waits on me, hard and puts his circuitly left my side since I took six, 12 years ago. And there's nothing for you to worry about, is there? And now if you just leave this rest to us. Three. Okay, let's go, sir. Let's go. One. One, two, three, go. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 o'clock. Take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squad? And warn you radio cars to watch out, especially suspicious neighborhoods like mine. Lady. I said when take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require my immediate. Oh, idiot. Now, why did I do that? No, he'll think I am a fool. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? He'll call, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you drink that Murray Hill 4098 again? I can't take what's keeping him so long. Ringing Murray Hill 4098. The line is busy, shall I? <sighs> Operator, I am desperate trouble. I, I cannot hear you, madam. Please speak louder. <laughs> I don't dare. I there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? Your call, please. What number are you calling, madame? You've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone's going to murder me. And you to get touch with that. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get touch with me. He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. The police! Ringing the police department. We hear sound of a train beginning to fade in. On second ring, Mrs. Stevenson scream again. But drawing on the train, drowns out her voice. Few seconds we hear something but roaring of train. Then dying away, phone at police headquarters ring. Department, person 43 Duff is speaking. Police department, Duff is speaking. Sorry, wrong number. The end. Cass. 
Mrs. Stevenson, third operator, second man, or George, information operator, Sergeant Duffy, operator, first man, Western Union clerk, ship operator, second operator. That's all. Thank you for listening.